As a child, I was always very inspired by mythical lands and creatures. And I just sort of always had this imagination for something out there. And I think Narnia is really the closest you're ever gonna get to a real fantasy world. The magic of Narnia is that there is this land in which all of it communicates, that all of it, not just the animals, can talk. But so still. The trees. What'd you expect? They used to dance. We are all one, which is what really Narnia is all about in its strongest sense. I didn't believe in the existence of talking animals. And here you are. In The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, there are only the four children are human, and everybody else in the world is a creature. Even the White Witch is half giant and half witch. I think that that set up like a, just a fantastic start for C.S. Lewis's stories of Narnia. Yeah, boy. I ain't gonna smell it if that's what you want. I think every kid wants to be able to talk to their pet. Yeah, I think, or, or talk to any animal. I can hear you. For me, I, I just think it would be so cool. <laughs> I think I do talk to my dog. I think he, I think he understands. My favorite talking animal in Narnia will probably reap a cheap. You people have no imagination. Because I have such respect for his respect for himself. I do believe courageous, courteous, or chivalrous might more befit. A night of Narnia. They bet you if mice could really talk, they'd have really deep voices. <laughs> Hello, I'm a mouse. I have to say my favorite character is probably Mr. Beaver in Language and Wardrobe. Look at my fur. You couldn't give me 10 minutes warning. I would have given you a week if I thought it would have helped. He was so much fun to create and so much fun to bring to life. And on that film, our AD, assistant director, Casey Hoddenfeld, married one of our uh, hairstylists. Uh, Roxy, and uh, I got invited to the wedding, as many of the crew did, and of course I brought the beavers with me. I'm not weird, no. This film is a little bit darker than the last movie. Narnia is no longer a safe place for the talking animals and creatures to be. I intend to exterminate this vermin. I think what C.S. Lewis did to a certain degree in Caspian is turn the mirror back on us as readers. Timber! The Telmarines are very reflective of the course of history that mankind has taken and the way that we have abused the land and uh, the natural creatures around us. Well, it's a theme throughout the film and throughout the whole series of books. In the day when C.S. Lewis was writing it, nature was under assault back then. It hasn't changed, and I think uh, that's why these books are so timeless and why their appeal is just as strong today as, they, as it was back then. I think, for me, one of the, the strongest accomplishments of the movie is to make an ecological statement. <laughs> because at the end of this movie, the day is won by nature. And I think it's a very strong statement that nature can fight back. There's never a time more important than now where kids need to get back in touch with nature. Ultimately, who saves the Narnians really and who, who brings order back to Narnia is Aslan. Rise, kings and queens of Narnia. And Aslan really is an animal. And he's trying to let these creatures come back and now live in peace with the Telemarines and bringing back hope to Narnia. It's just another illustration of C.S. Lewis showing us that we can learn from animals and we can learn from nature. Mm -hmm.